Yeah, it's a Rap Radar Podcast. My name is B. Dots. Elliot Wilson. Yeah. Elliot, man. The Rock is in the house. I got Rock Marcy, man. Marcy Alago. I came out of nowhere, man. This guy's working hard. $30, man. I got to get him to put it on title, man. It's DSP. So what people don't know, Rock Marcy drops albums. He makes us buy them, and then we get them on DSPs. <laughs> but it's worth the money, though. He's worth the money because he always delivers, man. He's one of the kings of the underground hip-hop New York. He's right up there with Griselda changing the game, man. Absolutely. 10 years in, man. I think the next 10 years are just going to be as good. Yes, sir. We're going to get into it, right? All that stuff, man. The whole catalog and everything, man. You know what I'm saying? Rock Marcy. On the Rap Radar Podcast. Yeah. God bless my soul. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, nigga. The path of righteousness is thinner. I was beaten with many stripes far more than I'd like to remember. Rock Marcy's here, man. What's, What's up, up, sir? Chillin', baby. Back at it again, back man. Back in the scene, man. man. Why well, was it time to come back finally, Rock? Man, you was been low this whole year. I mean, it, it was, it's only really been a year. I put out like <laughs> yeah. three last year. You so saw right. this in you 2018. Know, exactly. So, you know, I chilled for a minute. I felt like, all right, it was time, man. What are you inspired by these days? I went to um, Portland. I went to the Craig Moyer Warehouse for records. It's like millions of records. Yeah. So I went oh, record still shopping. Digging? We still digging? Yeah, that's mm. how we do this. That's part of the magic. So right. out, out there, I... Like I got a new found love for my production and stuff yeah. like that. It, it it really helped a lot. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you made the boys like almost entirely the whole project. Yeah, like mm-hmm. was that intentional? Yeah, when I found this gold mine of records, yeah, that <laughs> that I knew I was like, all right, I, I'm gonna do most of the beats on this yeah. project. So, like the real old school traditional way. Yeah, what we did was um, when I was on the tour, when I stopped in Portland, they invited us uh, to the to the. You know, to the compound. Didn't have much time, so they just gave me like a nice little stack of records. So that was already curated. So I bought as much as I could buy, like, Uh you know what I'm saying? Like in that small amount of time, I listened to it, bought it, and I told him, I said, when I'm done with the tour, I'm coming back. So I went back with my boy Kai, my man Animas. And we just spent like maybe like three, four days out there just like worker bees. Just on a production level, what 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 do you think is your most proud of with Marcia Lago? Tom Chambers. You know, Richard Gere. Like I knew yeah, when yeah. I heard some of these beats, I was like, oh, the album is done. I yeah. yeah. Why'd you roll with Richard Gere? That was the first visual. I felt like that's like me signature. Like mm. something real, like smooth, melodic, but hard. You know what I'm saying? It's all hitting. It's like one of them joints where you throw the dart, <laughs> boot, and it hit yeah. right in the middle. Like that's how I felt about <laughs> Richard Gere. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you name it yeah. Richard Gere? Uh, Cause that's like my nickname, my gear. Okay. Like you know, I'm Richard Gear, okay. fly dude, and all my gears. Like you know, I call him, that's one of my aliases, Richard Gear. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. That's why you got the pink lots. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, he's, <laughs> he inspired us. I saw the Instagram one time. He had a fly D square hoodie. I was like, mm-hmm. I got the sneakers. Let me see. And mm-hmm. Came about this. So and thank it, you. Bro. And it came off right too. You know see, what I'm saying? Cool, exactly. Man. It came off right. With the, <laughs> don't forget them corduroy '97s that yeah. splash with yeah. it. Take yeah, you did it right now. <laughs> exactly, you know I mean? That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But for the album, like you had that inner circle. So with, like mm-hmm. I know you had Q Tip involved in the mm-hmm. last project. Mm-hmm. So this time was he involved as much as he was well, in previous episodes? He's always like my consigliere. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm usually running stuff past him and whatever, you know what I'm saying? He'll always give me the Oh, okay, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, he'll be like, ah, you know, it's, it's cool, it's cool, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he was always, you know, he, you know, that's, that's a close friend of mine, so yeah. he always helps from that perspective. Not on this one as far as the beats, but, yeah. you know, he definitely helped me out. He said like, conciliage because then that so, last yeah. project, Dark Horse, <clears throat> that's like my favorite joint that he did. Yeah, yeah. Man. I was going to say, why did you decide to start the project off of the Prodigy sample? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Prodigy's just, words mm-hmm. begin the album, right? <laughs> Select yeah. few. I just felt like um, what he was saying was so fitting, like for for the project and where I'm at right now mm. in my career. You know what I'm saying, and, and where the game is at. Like mm. it's like you know what I'm saying. Everybody bum rushing the game, even people who don't even have love for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying. People don't even love hip hop, and they they in the game. You know mm. what I'm saying. They don't even got no love for it. You know what I'm saying. Out here, you know, just in the way, mm. taking up space. So you know what I'm saying. I felt like it was real fitting. And I felt like it needed to be, you know, magnified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What it means. So, what does it mean in your mind to say you're, you're one of those select few mm-hmm. that represents hip hop the right way? Um, well, I mean, to me, the select few is, you know, when you get that, when you get that nod from not only your your peers in the game, but you know, coming up in the game back in the days, you couldn't just come on the block talking about you was rapping, even on the block. We had our select people for that. Like, mm. okay, some dudes pull up talking about they rap. They be like, oh, word, y'all, y'all rhyme? 
yo, I'm gonna call my man Rock, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or whatever the case yeah, might be. So it was yeah. a select few people that could do that, you know what I'm saying, and rep and rep Who's for the us. nicest in this area and all that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So like, everybody couldn't just you couldn't just come into the cipher, like you know what <laughs> right. I'm saying, like you know what I'm saying. So yeah, it was really you know that's pretty much where, where I was coming from with that. Right. Mm-hmm. I saw that you tweeted too. You said it's been a ten year run from Marksburg to Marshall Lago. Ooh, how do you decade? Right, decade a decade of diamonds as well. <laughs> yeah. like, how do you think you've grown as an MC? I feel like I get better every project, man. I feel like every project I get better. Um, I, I just think the more the more time you spend with the craft, you automatically get better. Like anything mm-hmm. else you do, yeah. practice makes perfect. But for the most part, um, with every project, just learning to how to express yourself more. You study the last one. Like take for instance, when I made Mossberg, I felt like Mossberg didn't showcase my sense of humor. Mm. So I tried to showcase it more on on Reloaded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe Reloaded, I might feel like okay, I didn't showcase this part of my personality, and then on to the next. So that's how I feel like the growth Mercy has been Boku. for me. You going crown a lot of people that don't know. 2010 mm-hmm. Mossberg. Mm-hmm. 2012 Reloaded, mm-hmm. and speak on 2013, Marcy, Marcy Boku. Marcy Boku. Um, cool. Yeah, that was just like, um, that was an opportunity for me to showcase my production and, and, and hear a lot of other people on my production, because mm-hmm. I know people just probably was listening to my music and just felt like maybe I only sound good on it, or it mm-hmm. wouldn't work for other people and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I tried snatching up a lot of cats that I like, you know what I'm saying, and showcasing them on the production to, you know, Show people that you know this is this could be great universal. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, yeah, yeah it, could, it could be great and it could work for other people as well. And then four years after, I just want to go to, to mm-hmm. people at the catalog. Follow, I mean, follow, yeah, I'm following. 2017, Rose Buzz Revenge. Mm-hmm. People that don't know. Yeah, and I mean, that's a four year gap. Like, what was your I mean, approach with that project? Uh, you, you skipped over the Pempire too. Oh, Pempire I'm sorry. Strikes my back. bad. My bad. My Pempire. bad. My bad. Too much. Pempire. That's classic. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pempire strikes you had a back. Pempire beat out. I'm sorry, man. Nah, nah, not so one. good. Um, and then the, uh, four years after that, I was kind of like getting back into like, um, you know, I had a son during Reloaded. You know what I'm saying? Making Reloaded. So I took time out for my friends and my family. I felt like the just the chase of the music business. You kind of relationships and stuff like that. You know. You don't want to be negligent for people that you love and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I took a break for, you know, yeah. just for myself and personal yeah. growth too. Like, you know, sometimes you just want to go and chill, read books and, mm. you know, get back in with your friends and family and, you know, just get back into, you know, those things that's really important. Yeah. So I took that time out for that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Well, then why are we so prolific in 2018? You think that you gave us like free projects? Because mm-hmm. of the break. I took, you know what I'm saying? The break you just said that I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? From that time off, I was like, all right, cool. After that, it was like, all right, on them, on them, on them after that. Because I was like, all right, I, I took my vacation. Yeah. No more vacation time. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was interesting too, Rock, with this project. You said you, it, I was at a place of zen and clarity making mm-hmm. this project. What do you mean? Yeah, I was. Um, just... LA living, of course, you know what I'm saying? The sunshine. Yo, that's my neighbor, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we, yeah, let we, people we, neighbors. we are neighbors, wow. man. We are neighbors. <laughs> I bump into this man getting wow. groceries downstairs, coming in with yeah, my right, bags. Don't be ashamed if you're my neighbor, my guy. Wow. I'm not ashamed at all. I'm not ashamed at all. Just can't be telling the people I'm a I'm a musician, man. I that's want a true, good rep bad. on my name, man. In the building. They can't tell them I rap. But um, yeah, man. Um, LA living, the sunshine, the weather keep you in a good zone. Yeah. You know, been working out. I wasn't smoking for like two years up to making this project. I was like off weed for like two years. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So um, working out, you know what I'm saying? You know, the money helps, you know what I'm saying? Always. You know what I'm saying? Feeling feeling real good, richer than ever. Yeah, you run, you know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? Yes. The dividends. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so man. That decade you know? run leads to the right dividends. You know, I got rich nigga skin, man. What you want me to say, <laughs> man? You know what I'm saying? Like, but nah, why do you why, why do you think that we hear the project, right? Like I remember like when you first put it up. We're gonna talk about the business model too, mm-hmm. but like I remember when we like, went live, I was like, yo, I'm gonna go buy it. Mm-hmm. Like, all we support. And Absolutely. then beat us, like, I'm gonna go buy it. And I bought I was like, yo, I bought it. And beat us, like, how does it sound? I'm like, it's the same rock. It's mm-hmm. the same, you know, the same mm-hmm. consistency. It ain't, mm-hmm. you ain't go left. Like, why do you think that even though you was in maybe more of a peaceful, mm-hmm. zen kind of thing, it mm-hmm. didn't affect the creativity that you're still giving us that type of still mm-hmm. raw, uncompromising hip hop? Mm. Um, honestly, I mean, I feel like the lyrics 
um, I think I went up a level personally, yeah. and I feel like it's. I feel like I'm sharper and getting my point across. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you see when you live with it. The more you live with this project, you're gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just some powerful shit right here. But that's pretty much how I was feeling, man. Just like I, I felt real clear making it. So. I was interested in seeing the feedback from people because yeah. I didn't have so much on my mind. I didn't but why have... do you think you're so solidified <laughs> in that sound, though? You know what I mean? Like sometimes when artists say like they're at this like peaceful mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. the music suffers yeah. because they try different things and it yeah. don't really connect. But mm-hmm. you stuck to the script and mm-hmm. advanced within mm-hmm. your style. Yeah, man, that's that's a tough question because um, really I'm just pushing myself. Like you know what I'm saying? It's really the um, me producing more on this project also help, helped a lot with the clarity as well too because I wasn't like, um, I wouldn't say I'm never out of my comfort zone with other producers, but I'm way more in a comfort zone with my production. When I'm rhyming on my own beats, it's yeah. like being, it's like coming home to your bed. I don't yeah. care if you stay in a hotel <laughs> suite, but you you stay in the finest yeah. spot ever, but it ain't nothing like your bed, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's how I felt about this one, that, which, actually helped me be more clear on this project. But you're like, Alchemist tuck you in a little bit too, though. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I mean, Al's my brother. Okay. So, you know, we you know, we gonna always make sure we got certain hitmen on the project. Right. You know what I'm saying? I gotta stop by his crib, pick up a gun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I stop certain people, you know, pick up something, you know, yeah. a little rusty no, hammer here. Like, he's here mm-hmm. Rock Marcy's number one, period. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. That's what ALC said. No doubt. A lot of people say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people you? say that. Like, you know, I don't self-proclaim no, nothing, man. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the, you mm-hmm. know, champions in, in, the, in the space for him to step out and say, yeah, Rock I mean, Marcy's number one, period. I mean, if you listen to my music bar for bar, it's not like you can argue it with anybody. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't find nobody blowing me out the water. You know what I'm saying? So it's a good argument, man. Shout out to Alchemist, man. I, you know what I'm saying? You had this one line mm-hmm. that stood out to me. You said, the landscape changed when I went against the grain. Mm-hmm. The niggas wasn't quick to embrace. Why do you think yeah. that was? I mean, those um, minimalistic beats, you know what I'm saying? People listening to my production thinking like, okay, you know, some of the tracks had drums, but a lot of them didn't. They were sitting around waiting, yo, when the, drum, when the drum's going to come in, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. So... I think it was the minimalistic approach. A lot of people was like, eh, you know what I'm saying? It was a little off, you know, standoffish to it. But you, so you said the landscape change. Do you mm-hmm. feel like you were the uh, the catalyst for that change? <laughs> I was the catalyst. <laughs> like, it was like, I was. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to, like, it's, it's not about my feeling. It's about the truth and the facts. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you date 10 years back, wasn't nobody doing it like yeah, this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's 10 years ago when I made Mossberg and then reloaded and stuff like that so this sound was kind of like abandoned and also i even i felt like i even you know cavalier even went further you know what i'm yeah. saying as far as like you know the approach you know what i'm saying this approach in making music so i'm gonna tell you what a couple mm-hmm. people said to the critics out there this guy mm-hmm. rob uncut mm-hmm. does so he said love these drake think pieces about how influential he is meanwhile rock marciano dictated the sound of the last decade mm. of underground rap mm. and then i got fake short drive from right, chicago man. jumped in mm-hmm. he said i said it before i'll say it again rock marcy created his own genre, genre. his mm. fingerprints are all over the place he deserves all the accolades and much more mm. wow because now with the decade it makes people look at it in a context like yeah. do you yourself even like be like holy shit like mm. look at this like because now it's like even if you was responsible for the turn, you took it, like you said, and advanced it. So now it's in a real context of like a run and longevity in 10 years. Mm-hmm. Who had this type of influence for 10 years, man? You, you'd be hard to find a, any artist that's 10 years in the game of making music and still making music that's relevant and people even care about their projects. You know what I'm saying? So for one, that's flattering in itself, you know? But um, Ten, it didn't feel like 10 years, though. I'll be honest. It don't feel like it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I look younger and prettier than I did 10 years ago. So it's like, it's kind of weird. But you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I take it. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? You know, because I, I think if I was looking all crazy and washed up, it probably wouldn't be no hype behind it. They'd probably be like, this old man, if you don't get out of here. But it, it's a blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? That people even acknowledge it still 10 years later, man. You when God loves you, you say you, know, you made sacrifices on the path you made. Like, mm-hmm. talk about some of those sacrifices. Oh, um, the sacrifices was um, when you make music like I make, um, 
you don't get you don't get the festival bookings mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You don't get certain things because it's not party music or it's not sonically in alignment with everything that's popular at the time. So you get looked over for a lot of things, especially being um you know, independent too, to top right. it off. You know what I'm saying? So I, a couple of things working against me. So those are the sacrifices I made. You know what I'm saying? I haven't even, I haven't even really sat down with people to even discuss doing no deal. I haven't even been interested wow. in doing a deal mm. since, um, since Mossberg, you know what I'm saying? And reloaded. Like I felt like Mossberg and reloaded. Those are the sacrifices I made. Like I didn't really, I didn't really get nothing off them projects. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I didn't make no money or whatever the case may be, but I didn't get what I should have been getting. You know what I'm saying? And like what I'm getting now. Cause yeah. I'm like, if I would have been doing this from Mossberg from the jump to up yeah. to now, I'd probably be up here like Master P. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, you know, but. You know, it is what it is, but that's what some of the sacrifices are. Well, speaking of that, like, mm-hmm. even in 2019, we say all the games about streaming. Mm-hmm. You want this Rock Marcy album, you got to go mm-hmm. to Rock, mm-hmm. was it RockMarciano.com? RockMarcy.com, man. <laughs> go to it, yeah, RockMarcy.com. And come out the pocket and pay what? How much mm-hmm. I got paid for that album? $30, man. That's $30. light. That's light. Yeah. What's your hoodie cost? 200 Come on, man. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I, bought, I, bought, I bought the album. Uh-huh. But, like, but you, and I know you, eventually it's going to come to Title and mm-hmm. DSPs like Absolutely. ourselves. But like, mm-hmm. you've done that with the last couple of projects. Like, talk about why mm-hmm. you feel so confident, why it's still important to like mm-hmm. have a window where you're selling your product before mm-hmm. it's available to everybody on streaming. Well, like I say, I always say it's like... It's like having the kicks before they come out. You know what I'm saying? You play, a, you play, a, you you know, you pay a premium to have the Jordans on your feet before they hit the stores. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And also, I feel like it it gives a chance, uh, uh, the fans a chance to you know just to support me directly. Because sometimes when you stream and stuff, or you buy something in the store. You know, a lot of these artists be in deals where they don't even benefit off of, you know, you think you supporting them, but mm-hmm. you you supporting, you know, their overseers. You're not really supporting that person directly. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is an opportunity for people to support me directly. And, you know, it, it, it gives me the opportunity to give them better product. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And is it still strong? Like, what's the feedback? Like, mm-hmm. Do you put a number on, like, how many you want to sell? Like, mm-hmm. people pressure on you in that way? Or, like, nah, what's success in that model mm-hmm. before? And then when do you decide mm-hmm. to put it on DSPs and when mm-hmm. is it time? I usually give it like two weeks, you know what I'm saying? I truly try to give it two weeks. Um, I don't put a number on it, but um, it does overwhelmingly well every time, man. Every time I do it, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm always, every time I do it, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm a smart motherfucker. Like every time I do it, like (laughs) I'm a smart motherfucker. Like, yeah, that's how you do it, rock. You know what I'm saying? Because that way it's like, you know. I'm in control of when I get paid. Don't nobody tell me when I get paid. When I put out a project, I get paid now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Versus like some streaming service telling me when I get paid. I get paid immediately. You know what I'm saying? Because the people when I when I'm buying records to create my project, they want their money right mm-hmm. now. When I you know when people mixing my projects down and stuff like that, I got to get them their money. So you know, that's. You know that's why it benefits from, you know for me and my business. To play devil's advocate, do you feel like it alienates some fans that might mm-hmm. not get it in real time and mm-hmm. you know soak it up mm-hmm. as opposed to people that are pay- paying that premium? Mm-hmm. Well, if you're a real fan, you'll pay the premium. Right. So I don't, you know, so I, I feel like thirty dollars isn't a lot of money, I bro. Agree. I'm just thinking <laughs> you know like I'm when saying? you we, when you put a project out, people mm-hmm. get these reviews out. You mm-hmm. know, people the critics are talking, and just some people might be late to the party. Yeah. I guess it's their fault, right? I mean, you know, they they will get it eventually. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it'll it'll be up there. But if they're a real fan, and I, I would hope that they would just want to support. And even if they want to wait to stream it, that's fine too. Yeah. Because let's face it, you could go, you could buy a, a pirate stream. You right. could bootleg the stream. You could go on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are uploading it as You're I make it. As soon as I put to get it up everything there, taken down. I mean, I try, but yeah. it's you know, with lawyers and stuff like that. It don't come down immediately, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can start the process and it might take four days before the yeah. stream comes down. So if you really want to hear it that bad, you can hear it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Okay. It's really about, about support and then people wanting to support. You love the support. I feel like mm-hmm. that's a common theme throughout the music, especially mm-hmm. like on Time Chambers and throughout mm-hmm. the project. You talk about like how what's good is credit if mm-hmm. you can't get it while you're alive. Why yeah. is that so important to you just mm-hmm. to get that love? Um, Well, I mean, I just noticed that that's a common theme in in 
in entertainment like you know what i'm saying like and especially in hip-hop because hip-hop is so you know masculine machismo i mean you know at least on my side but um <laughs> you know i'm just saying you know just saying but um you know a lot of people like you know they <clears throat> they they afraid to get they co-sign yeah. or say what they like Step or out, whatever yeah. the case may be and then somebody died they like oh this dude was the greatest i love them niggas love the dick ride when you die they wait they, yeah they wait till you die or something like that like yeah. let's keep it a buck if something happened to me god forbid you know what they gonna be saying come on man like you know what i'm saying so you know that's that's pretty much what it's about. We had to like we had to put a magnifying glass on our culture, and we gotta hold ourselves accountable. Like give people they roses when they hear yeah. like like Max B. Ain't nobody was talking about Max yeah, B when they, he had the streets yeah. on lock. Mm -hmm. He was playing Max B every day. Max B had the streets on lock. Well, nobody talking about it. He get hit with seventy five, and it's like oh yeah, everybody's like yo, everybody's wavy now. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So. We gotta stop that, man. You said like gotta give people their props. It's not like a, a blowjob. Yeah, what's the big deal? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't a blowjob, you know what I'm saying? It's just a salute. Yo, I, I see what you're doing, B. I'm I'm a fan, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause especially me, I feel like I get a lot of uh I get a lot of fandom. I get I get a lot of backdoor fandom. Mm. Yo, yo, rock that dude, or I get it from Grapevine or whatever the case may be, yeah. but they'll never go out on a public forum or whatever. And that's fine. Yeah. That's cool too, you know what I'm saying? You know. Why do you think it is? That they don't, they don't um, fully do it. I don't know. Like I said, I think it's that masculinity thing. Yeah. It's just machismo, yeah. or whatever. Like you know, I don't, you know, I want to give them their credit. You know what I'm saying? I'm that dude. You know, they, they in their circle. Sometimes people are who they are in their circle, and they they believe the hype. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person. I don't believe the hype like that. Like people will say, like, yo, rock, yo, you great, you the goat, or whatever. Great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If that's how you feel, cool. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a fan of other people, and I try to show that. Throughout my career, you know what I'm saying. If people are hot, I work with them. You yeah. know what I'm saying. If I like people, I work with them. But man. you don't. Then I shoot them out. But you don't dick ride for no features. No, nah, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying. I don't dick ride for features. I mean, my way. It, you know, I, I always help. I always had pride in that. You know what I'm yeah. saying. Like somebody get hot first thing. You know what I'm saying. Or you try and pull something more first thing. A lot of people think it's like, yo, if I get this dude on a record, I always look like. You get hot on your own. You don't need me on no record. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's always was that was always weird to me how yeah. people think that that approach. I guess it worked for some people, but I was always a person that just wanted to be like, I was self-made. I, I ain't need no features on my albums yeah. to in order for my joints to crack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. I guess that's just pride for me. Yeah. You know but see, you got West Side Gun on the album. Why was that mm -hmm. important? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of like attention mm -hmm. with Griselda and their ascension this year. Like, mm -hmm. talk about your view of that and like why mm -hmm. you wanted West Side on the project. Mm -hmm. He's on the project. Kyle's on the project. Mm -hmm. Pirates on the project. Willie the Kid's on the project. Um, these are people I work with. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't Real like uh, it wasn't <laughs> like picking him out to be on this project. It was like I work with West Side Gun. I'm on yeah. like a, a number of their projects oh, yeah. as a producer Martell, and a rapper. Yeah. So as this just me working with the people I work with. It wasn't like I went out and was like, oh, okay, he went and got Rich the Kid or somebody yeah. you've never heard me work with before. You know what I'm saying? Like I went and got the people I work with. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. that's pretty much. You know what I mean? I feel like. People want that too, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of my projects, I, I usually rock by myself most of the projects. So I feel like this is also me also giving back to the people as well too because they love when me and West Side rock together. Mm -hmm. yeah. They love to hear me and Kai together. Yeah. They love, you know, me and Pirate, that's my brother right there. All these dudes is my guys, so in real life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just keep working with the people that I work with. What do you with. make of that Griselda? Like it seems like a lot mm -hmm. of attention's on them. I mean, mm -hmm. you witnessed it being yeah. a part of to them and watch their growth. Like, mm -hmm. What do you make of all the attention they seem to be getting this year and breaking through and mm -hmm. reaching more of an audience? I mean, it's beautiful, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, when I speak to Wes, like, I always tell him, like, yo, this is good for the sound, man, that mm -hmm. y'all getting all this attention and stuff like that is good for the sound because a lot of people were scared to even do it like this. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. So now when they start to see Griselda, you know what I'm saying? They start to see brothers like myself and Kai, and they start to say, yo, hold up. That style of music is beneficial. We could do that too. We could be ourselves and we could get lit. We ain't gotta, you know what I'm saying? We ain't gotta Chase do party raps. Yeah. We ain't gotta do party. We ain't gotta be party rappers to <laughs> ride around in, 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 in Ferraris and Mozzies and things like that and live good. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's just all for the good. You know what I'm saying? So I love, but what's, what's up with you and Kai, man? Last time mm -hmm. we talked, we were supposed to have this project out between mm -hmm. you and him. What's mm -hmm. the status with that, man? 
Me and Kai, man, you know what I'm saying? That's my man, you know what I'm saying? That's my bro right there. We When we get to it, we will, man. We just move at our own pace, man. Uh-huh. Like, it's mainly about just being brothers and friendship, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we get to music, we will, you know what I'm saying? You know. Are you happy with the results of Dark Horse? Hell yeah. And the yeah. feedback? Hell yeah. I'm yeah. very happy Do with it. Do you still that. listen to it? I mean, when I'm done with a project, I'm kind of on to the next, so I don't really sit back and listen to mm-hmm. like projects after they done. Once they done, I just kind of like move on to the next. Right. Mm-hmm. So who's, the st- I guess, the stamp of approval for every project that you deliver? My, my bros, like, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be Tip, whether it be Kai, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, all my brothers, okay. you know what I'm saying? They're all, you know what I'm saying? That's what, not having yes men in your circle, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's that's what that's good for, because the projects continue to get better, you know what I'm saying? Because people are not around you lying, yeah. you know what I mean? What made you hook up with uh, DJ Muggs? Um, Muggs, Muggs the big homie, man. Why, you know, how could you not work yeah. with Muggs? You know what I'm man. saying? Muggs is like a legend, you know what I'm saying? So, and that was an opportunity to learn and step back, like, all right, cool, I don't got to worry about the beats I can be yeah. produced so I wanted to actually get a get a chance to do that you know what I'm saying so that was kind of like a different mm-hmm. experience for you though right mm-hmm. absolutely because I wasn't um you know I didn't really have any you know input on the production so mm-hmm. usually in my projects I have input on the production but this one it was just mugs do you just trust everybody like that or just mugs in particular um I don't trust everybody like that but you know I felt like mugs Muggs deserves that kind of mm. respect, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, with the enormous success that he's had as a producer and me yeah. always being a fan of, like, you know, what he's done, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I, I, I'm adventurous. Yeah. I don't mind, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't I don't mind taking <laughs> a chance, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. mentioned ALC other, mm. earlier, like the Saw record. How did that come together? And you got a, a great whole uh, line in there too about uh, so, uh, mm-hmm. a certain history yeah. situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got to speak the line, Elliot. Yeah. Oh man, you said Ho gave me a dap <laughs> right after he stabbed Un in the abdomen. I jumped in the cab with Africa. I was like, is that? Because my thing is, you could have you could have really been in the club with the situation. I was there that night. You was that 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 That's that real life. A that wasn't, yeah. What? I didn't make he really dapped you up? That's a fact. <laughs> oh man. That's a fact. Like, yeah, he dapped me. So you went to Kit Kat Club like, that you night. Like, it was, it was a Q-tip party though. It was a Q-tip you know, party. We all we all men like for me to get a man to dap. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing like you know what I'm saying? Seeing whole it was going little, what up? Baby, was it that you know little what I'm chaos in the club at that moment, bro? Right? Nah, what it was, was it? no, no, no. See, the thing is, you took it wrong. See, I said, see, whole oh, gave before. me a dap. And then right afterwards, oh, oh really? that gotcha. one and that, you know, what I'm so uh, allegedly, because <laughs> I mean, I didn't yeah. see him poke the homie, so I don't, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. but I was there at the party that night, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, it's a classic hip hop moment. Word. In facts, I remember because after I gave him a pound, it wasn't even like five minutes later before it was like pandemonium <laughs> in the spot. He was like, "Oh <laughs> shit, something happened." The club shaking, you know, what I'm saying, the club started shaking. So he was like, oh shit, you know well, what I'm saying? I did hit him. He allegedly did admit to that, but he he did mm-hmm. tell me he sent his best to you mm-hmm. and say that he did went on he did copy your album. He oh, went on the Rock Marcy salute joint. To him, man. Thirty dollars. You got whole thirty dollars right there, baby. <laughs> I, I salute to the to the and big he gonna holler at you man. real soon. He said, salute you know what I'm saying? You know yeah, Jay Z? <laughs> a little bit. You know him too, man. <laughs> nah, <laughs> man. I, I remember work. Yeah, we was all at um his spot. I forgot where they was all working at the Rock or whatever. At the time, man. You know what I'm saying? I I was hoping I could actually join the Rockefeller squad back then at that wow. time. We yeah. had some talks going on. Yeah. See, it heard some music from me. Me and uh, Bus stopped at a session. Bus played yeah. some of my shit. I could see his wheels turning like, yo, this kid kind of nice or whatever. Yeah. So, But nah, nonetheless, man, I was there that night. Wow. And yeah, that's what happened. It was a, it was a Q-tip it party, right? Ca- Q-tip I don't album remember release? whose party it was. I think it was a Q-tip album release I don't party. Yeah, it probably the, uh, was Amplified. Amplified. Yeah. Amplified. Yeah. But I remember, he, he, I remember vividly, even when I seen him that night, he seemed kind of gooped up. Like the way yeah, he was- Yeah, ready to move. He had, you know what I'm saying? He was low, he was on but his But the crazy shit, thing is that when that album came out, it was also the anniversary of the, of the moment. So that's how bugged out it was. Like, that's crazy. That's how crazy nah, the I time no, is. I, yeah, I'm about to say, I had no idea that. I had no idea. <laughs> I 
had no idea. I had no idea whatsoever. <laughs> what are some of your favorite lines of the project? Because as I'm listening, mm-hmm. you talk about being more humorous. I catch myself laughing at some of like the mm-hmm. one liners yeah. mm-hmm. that you deliver. Damn, man, you put me on the spot. I got some. Huh? I got some. I got joys. my favorite one was like, uh, a, I think you said a nigga or a chick can't do, for, yo, a nigga can't do shit for me like a chick with no ass. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> can't do shit with me for like a chick with like a bitch with no ass. <laughs> yeah, you can't do shit with me like a bitch with no ass. He's in the yeah. roof, Chris, with in the booth kissing yeah, a girl. <laughs> Like all types of stuff, man. I, no, but that's the you I like to kick like real outlandish, yeah, like yeah. have those outlandish bars. That's why yeah. maybe when we heard the whole un thing, we didn't know if that was based on real life or that's just a dope line. Nah, that said. was real. That was real. Yeah. Um, that was real. Like I said, that was allegedly. I don't of course, know what allegedly, he had allegedly up in there, but I was there that night. But when you put mm-hmm. your pen down, do you try, do you try to feel like as an MC, you want to come up with that outlandish mm-hmm. line or like that wordplay to like people mm-hmm. are like, oh shit, I can't believe he said that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, but you also want it to be honest too to mm-hmm. your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You and just be making up well, like like that type of you know yeah. I can't make that up well I could make that up right. but that yeah. would be like you know what I'm saying it would be awkward for me sitting here and I'd be like yeah I just yeah. you know I'm not that imaginative you no, know but what I'm you saying was in game. I mean I say too like I'm sure most people watching this know your history but let, let's go back a little bit for people that may not know that mm-hmm. like you was in the scene. You was part of Flipmo Squad with Busta Rhymes. Mm-hmm. Like your career may have went one path and mm-hmm. then things changed. Like talk a little bit about that beginning of like sort of mm-hmm. being in the industry and like being at these events and being like down with Buster and like mm-hmm. trying to navigate through that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, it was all just pretty much a learning experience, man. Just getting a chance to be around with Bust, like who was like, Buster that's Rhymes, like, yeah. it's like hey, Bob's James Brown, man. That's the hardest working <laughs> man in, in show business. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He, nobody can outwork Buster, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I just learned a lot, man. I was like hip hop training camp, you know this what I'm saying? This is like late 90s for people that don't know, mm-hmm. into 2000, right? Early 2000s, yep, yeah. late 90s, early 2000s. Maybe like 2000, 99, yeah. 2000. Like what year is the, the heist record? You're on there with mm-hmm. Ray and Ghost, right? That's I 2000, what right? Yeah, that was, yeah. that might be 2000. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. might be 2000. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, it was just a, a opportunity to come into the business and actually look behind the curtain. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So that's how, I, you know, that was my introduction to the business, getting a chance to see what was happening behind the scenes and stuff like that. Even everything, like, you know, I, I'm forever in debt for that because even being with Bus, like, I wasn't just the artist with Bus. Like, me and Bus was like real, real friends. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. being with him every day, I'm getting a chance to, like, I'm listening to business calls and I'm 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 you know I'm privy to meetings and things that's going down like so I'm learning a lot about the business you know what I'm saying that probably most artists when you sign a deal you don't really get a chance to yeah. get in on, on all of that type of business and being around with somebody who's like you know like top dude in the game you know what yeah. I'm saying so that was just like a big learning curve man learned a lot but then, when it, but then when it didn't work out, like how do you think looking back on it now, like with this ten year run, mm-hmm. you were able to kind of be this self contained, self made, independent force, and like mm-hmm. how it really worked. Like mm-hmm. how did you make it work? Now that's the tricky part. <laughs> there wasn't no like I didn't have a plan out the gate. It was like you know what I'm saying. Like you said, like when I went against the grain, like yeah. I wasn't like. When I started Marsburg, the online wasn't clicking like this. Yeah. Everything was like, it was like only a few sites, like allhiphop.com yeah. and, you know what I'm saying, underground hip. It wasn't much, yeah. you know, going on online, but um, I didn't know how I was going to crack, you know, crack the barrier, but... um it was it was it was definitely dark period. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was a dark period in my life because, um, of course, I still wanted to do music, but those were the times where you still needed a deal to like mm-hmm. to Have put your look. foot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So after that, then you know Twitter and stuff like that start happening, mm-hmm. so people could I could spread the word a little more mm-hmm. on Twitter and stuff like that. So that ended up helping and little things. So it seemed like it seemed like the most high just steered me through the, you know what I'm saying? Steered yeah. me out the darkness. Right. I know you say you don't mm-hmm. want to align yourself with like a major label, but mm-hmm. have you ever thought about it, giving it some consideration? That way you could probably put mm-hmm. or help better uh, like pirate situation mm-hmm. or some of other yeah. that involved with you? Absolutely. Um, I'm getting ready to um, sit down and take some meetings with some people. Like, okay. you know, finally going to actually- Oh, you know, Rock coming to the change. table 2020? <laughs> I mean, as a, as an executive mogul, I'm going to throw my weight around. As you can see, look at everything that I touch. Everything that I touch or I associate with myself, it yeah. start flying. You feel mm, me? Yeah. So, you know, 
yeah, so that's that's only right, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Something levels, levels, to. levels, yeah. You talk about even at the end of the album, like Legacy, you have mm. that Max B clip. Mm. Why mm. was that important to incorporate that? Mm. Cause it's like um, when you when you write in your story, you don't know how it's gonna end. You know what I'm saying? You just busy writing it. You know what I'm saying? And to me, it's like now after ten years, I'm getting to that point where I'm starting to realize like my legacy and what you know what I mean to the game. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much where my mind state is these days. After ten in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. After ten in, it's like, I right, where do you go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so now it's just on the bigger and better things. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not even on some morbid shit, but just like, how do you look at your or view your legacy as? Mm. I just look at it like it is what it is. I mean, my influence in the, in the game is apparent. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can see it. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. It's all over the place. So I look at it as a great thing. It's not morbid at all. It's like, it's wonderful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there was, there was no place at the table for this. Mm-hmm when I was doing this. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? There was no place at the table. Now look at it. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm at the table. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. The it, legacy is wonderful. It does feel like there's more of a balance than there's ever been mm-hmm. between like the underground and mm-hmm. like the mainstream. It's like you can still be a Drake fan and mm-hmm. still appreciate what you guys do. Mm-hmm. The 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 essence of this music is never gonna go anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? People gonna always be interested in like it's, it's what people are doing in the streets. It's always gonna be like you know what I'm saying, and, and just the basics of hip hop. It's always gonna be there. They'll have they have other fads, but but this shit this shit ain't going nowhere. What you mean like soulful beats and like sharp bars, yeah, like that kind just, of just that, just beats, beats to the rhymes. Yeah, beats to the rhymes. <laughs> That's not going nowhere. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Beats to the rhymes, like two turntables and a mic type shit, like. My, I take pride in that, that my music sound like that. Like a dude could just have my loop, just uh, just be bringing it back and I could be on the mic killing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And the music sounding like that. So you so you stay inspired and don't think that that, as much as it may be so much like, you know, I feel like 2019 was kind of a tough year in hip hop in mm-hmm. terms of like, you know, Nipsey passing obviously and just mm-hmm. like a lot of things popped off, but it like, you know, that may seem a little more commercial, right? Like that maybe mm-hmm. hip hop doesn't have as much of a balance, but mm-hmm. you seem like still confident that like, mm-hmm. What you guys do has its place and can even ascend further. Absolutely. I mean, look at it. Look at look at what Griselda's doing. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They taking it to the next level. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like it's on a major now with a big machine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm seeing the the, uh, the album on the um yeah. on the Beverly Center, yeah. you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Big billboards and stuff like that. But it like still that. sound raw. There's no yeah, much exactly. Sand. And they're not like compromising the sound or whatever to to, to fit in. So, you know, it's I think it's in a wonderful place, man. You know what I'm saying? And there's a whole crop of other young cats that's coming up and you know, they coming and it is what it is. How do you envision Marcy Enterprises like mm-hmm. taking it? Like where do you see mm-hmm. your brand and um your situation going? Mm. Well, that like I was just saying, um, I see it going into creating opportunities for others. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got new artists that I'm working on right now. Like, you know, you're going to see some of the new projects that I got coming out, mm. you know? So that's pretty much where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Making the um, making it bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? Making making Marcy Enterprises bigger than just Rock Marcy. You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's about creating opportunities for others, you know? Does that mean pulling people back from your hometown, Long Island, or mm-hmm. from abroad, or? Everywhere. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Wherever I find talent, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I feel like is needed, but definitely Long Island, you know what I'm saying? And and other places, too. Mm-hmm. Wherever I feel like, you know, if I, if I connect with something, you know what I mean? I, I see that there's space in it. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm gonna definitely put my my muscle behind it. Right. Yeah. A lot of your music's not really necessarily with like you know Kanye made that turn with Jesus came made super religious. But if you look at this album, you got two records with God in the title mm-hmm. and God we trust. Mm-hmm. God loves you. Like what made you go in that direction? Do you think mm-hmm. finding ill gospel joints and getting that inspiration from them like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm not gonna act all philosophical like oh, I mean, <laughs> this light came down one day. Like, nah, I was just like, yeah, this sample is fire. I'm doing something on this. 
and I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna stay in, within the lines. I'm gonna color in the lines. I ain't yeah. gonna get. Well, wild. how did you? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. How did you stay in the lines and mm -hmm. not seem like you stepping out trying to like mm -hmm. be something different or worry mm -hmm. about if it's, it's like secular music mm -hmm. or like you know those kind of. I mean, I'm not boundaries. worried about nothing anyway. I'm a grown man, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of sides to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So if, if somebody just think they listen to my music and they hear one song and just think that's me, like you'd be sadly mistaken. There's a lot of sides <laughs> to me. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, word up, like, you know, I'm a man, I'm, you know, I'm a father, I'm a son, you know, I'm a friend, you know what I mean? I'm a, a lover neighbor, of the ladies, neighbor. I'm a neighbor, I'm a neighbor, <laughs> be good to thy neighbor, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, you know, sir. a lot of shit like that. You also pack out a lot of these shows, man. Mm -hmm. I saw one of the shows you had in New York City, it was wall to wall people. Like, is it still like mm -hmm. that all across the country? I mean, yeah. usually where I go, man, like, you know, my fans are like serious, man. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? They show a lot of love, man, I'm, you know. What can I say, man? I'm I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful. Hopefully they keep coming out and packing out like that. Yeah. Or, I think I saw one of the shows Buster came on mm -hmm. and he was giving you your roses in mm -hmm. real time. True indeed. Yeah. But you know, that's that's Buster. Buster is not like a um Buster wears his emotions on his sleeve. You yeah. know, if Buster rock with you, he rock with you all the way. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up and down. Like that's why he's a good ally in the game. Like anybody that's working with Buster, if your Buster's on your side, mm. If you get a, a fire going, he gonna fan that motherfucker. Like, you know what I'm right, saying? That's right. one thing, he gonna fan that shit. Yeah. So um, yeah, shout out to Bus, man. That's a great too, because a lot of times when people leave certain crews or whatever, there's always hard feelings, yeah, but it seems like mm -hmm. you guys, if you ever had that, got past it, and mm -hmm. like he is probably your, one mm -hmm. of your biggest supporters and advocates out there for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm the type of person, all I do is show love. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> you, you hate on me for what like if only thing a nigga can hate on me for is maybe your, your bitch might like me or something it'd be stuff out of my control you know what i'm saying but you know you can't hate on me like you know what i'm saying niggas hating on me man that's like that's crazy man if a nigga hating on me it's personal man what, it's definitely some what other is it like shit. going to be like this young og like we were talking about a little earlier off mm -hmm. mic about how like you know hip-hop be like you're on your fourth album you're already mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. og and put you to pass like, right? yeah yeah like what's it like being a sort of young og and i know mm -hmm. even even on Say La V, mm -hmm. you gotta say this says it's a young man's game till mm -hmm. I bust your ass. I like that line too. Pull up with money like Thunder Dan. <laughs> what's it said like, it's a young man's it? game till I bust your ass. Huh? <laughs> yeah. um, what's it like that transition of like being looked at as like a young OG in a mm -hmm. sense, like, but still is mm -hmm. relevant, like you said. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I guess, you know, people can't ignore the work that you put in after a while. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's been 10 years since Mossberg and I was putting in groundwork before that. We didn't yeah. talk about the UN Ooh, or yeah. just all that shit I did with Pete Rock. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? Like, you know, Pete Stramentals, you know, even the features like Ghost and Ray and Buster on the heist. Yeah. So yeah. it goes back before 10 years. Yeah. It's more closer to 20. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's more true. closer to 20, real spit. I'm getting better. Yeah, man. Um, It's really just a blessing man i really i don't know even know how to um how to answer how people like as far as like being a young og in the game um man that's a tough one i know there's probably people want me to get the fuck out of the way for all i know you know what i'm saying but um you know it's just a blessing i still feel the passion for the music and when i feel like i'm not feeling like the passion to, i feel like every project I feel like I want to prove myself again. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to prove myself every edge, yeah. time. Like, every yeah. time I want to prove myself, like, just to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you losing the edge? What's up? I confront myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's not necessarily mm -hmm. to impress your peers, just more so for yourself. Yeah, it's for okay. myself at this point in time because, like, my peers are impressed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, they, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like, what more, what more do I have to prove to anybody else? Like, you know what I'm saying? After 10 year run, uh, 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 quite a few classic albums under my belt. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, How many classics, Rock? How many you get a classic I mean, fan too? I, you know, for me not to be, I'm not going to even, you know, for me to just be, just just to keep it a thousand, just from my opinion on the outside looking in. Because I'm not going to buy into everyone was a classic. I'm mm. not going to buy into that. Mossberg is a classic. Mm. Reloaded. That's a classic. You know what I'm saying? Those are classics. Um, now, 
Man, you want to talk about rosebuds and, and the bitter <laughs> dose now? <laughs> Did both of those is like mm, they solid. I, I to me personally, I think the bitter dose is a classic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, three, to me, three classics. Mm, like you know what I'm saying? And even this new one, they like yo rock. This is some of your best work yeah. ever. Marcy Alago is like some of my best work ever. A lot I of like that people that horse. love me. The horse, the horse like, yeah, yeah. You know why I like it so much? Because it came out of nowhere. I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting it. And then when I sat with it, I was mm-hmm. like, yo, man. Yeah. I was running it back like the console. Yeah, Hence the running. meaning of the dark horse. You know, you don't see me coming. Yeah. It's like that's the guy. Well, you I lost count. count. We got four out. classics, five yeah. classics. How many we got? You know, and um, <laughs> what else? What else? The Pimpire. The Pimpire. That's a class. You need to go Pimpire. revisit that. I, the Pimpire Strikes Pimpire. Back. <laughs> go listen to that. I was listening to that in Chicago. We was riding around. I was playing. I was in the car dying laughing. I couldn't believe none, some of the shit I was saying. <laughs> So I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there like, I, cause I I don't remember a lot of the songs. So I was like listening to him, just like a fan of myself. Yeah. Like I'm sitting in the car, me and my man. I'm like, yo, you heard what I said, yo, me and Pyro. I'm like, yo, this. So man, when you this do these, fire, so huh? when you do these shows, I'm sure a lot of fans are upset that you don't do certain songs from certain yeah, projects. It's too many then, projects. Right? It's right. too many. Pro- I can't touch everything. You know what I'm saying? I can't touch everything. You know. Um, you know, uh, even Marcy Bocoop. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like just check that out. Yeah. Fire. It's pure fire on there. Um, so what are five? Can't songs? touch everything. Can't so what are five everything. songs that are like are essential though? Like if you if if I go see Rock Marcy live, I'm gonna definitely see these five songs. Like what what's mm. essential to the set list? In your mind? Damn, that's that's messed up because that be that that's been changing. Like mm. so that's, saying, that's right? been changing. Um, you gonna get you of course you get seventy six. You get Thug's Prayer. Mm. You get um, mm, you get Tech to a Mac. <laughs> What else you get? Um, I can't name them all, man. It's too many, man. It's too yeah. many. Uh, those just to name a few. The, of course, joints off the horse. You gonna get? Yeah. Um, you gonna get Congo? You gonna get? You gonna get Fabio? I like the Fabio joint. Um, man. So you keep it open, yeah. like you 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 yeah. you take it with the set list a lot. It's not you're yeah. not stuck I, I in one. I jump around. I jump yeah. around. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And sometimes like the new shit, like Marcia Lago, it's like. You can't come out there and not do joints off Marcia Lago. Yeah. You can't not do Tom Chambers. You can't not yeah. do Richard Gere. You can't. You, know what I'm saying? you can't not like. Yeah. So you can't rob the people neither. So some of the, the new projects, yeah. like take for instance, when I do a show now, Marcia Lago and Dark Horse, I'm already like twenty minutes into the set just yeah. off of the newest material. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know. So before I even start going back, I'm probably like 20 minutes, a half hour in. It's like, all right, cool. We down to the home stretch now. Yeah. It's time to squeeze in. Yeah. Y'all, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Y'all, my, my, my old classics. You know what Problems I'm saying? Problems of the blessed beat out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised a lot of the women like Marcy too. Mm-hmm. Like quoting the lyrics, mm-hmm. they're attending the shows. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. when you go to a Marcy show, it's going to be a, 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 dude, a, mm-hmm. a sausage fest. Mm-hmm. But there's some women hoodies. sprinkled there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Marcy's catering to the female court. I'm a beautiful man. <laughs> like I'm trying to tell these people, I'm a... <laughs> How these women not gonna be at my shows, man? They gonna Come be on, women at my shows, like straight up. They lucky I ain't got a machine behind me, man. To push the sex <laughs> sex appeal that I got. I got a certain appeal that a lot of niggas in my lane don't have. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it They're is. A little crusty, you know I had a little crusty. I mean, just say, you know, it's different when you see a beautiful a beautiful man doing it versus like beautiful you know, man making underground rap. Exactly. You know what I'm mean, saying? It don't happen rap. every day, man. You know what I'm saying? But nah, I, I also I just think it. it the music, I also, in my rhymes, you listen, I talk to females a lot yeah, too yeah, yeah. in my rhymes, Sax you know what fifth, I'm saying? Yeah, I talk that. to females Ooh. in my rhymes, so mm-hmm. you know, they can hear the, they can hear that I'm genuine Content. and talking to them. Like, I don't sound like somebody, like, he's trying to talk to women. Like, no, I talk to women in real life. So, <laughs> it, 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 so it, it's a natural progression, you know what I'm saying? My, my, my female, Bars are not reaching. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like when you hear fabulous rapping talking to me. You can tell that's coming from a genuine place. Yeah, that yeah. man is rapping to females, yeah. and it's coming from a genuine. It's really coming from just a genuine place. Why so. do you think you play off a lot of some of the pimp themes in your music? Mm-hmm. Do you get any, you get any heat for that from the ladies? I love that shit. I mean, sometimes you do because people are listening to your music and they just think. But that's even with the gangster talk or whatever. No matter what, people are always try to say, "Oh, this is how you are." I oh, I heard your music yeah. and whatever. And it's just like. Yo, it's still entertainment. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, day to day, you see me, I'm coming in up. I be at Whole Foods, man. I be working out of the park, man. I be working, you know what I'm saying? I be on FaceTime with my son, man. Yeah. Buying, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, 
like, like I'm a grown man now. Like I'm not a kid. Like so, yeah. you know. I like that clip you used. He was, she said, uh, "Can I have a day off?" He mm -hmm. was like, "Bitch, you got to." Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I know it's Mother's Day, but you got a pimp to pay too." You know so, yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was funny, man. So I just was like, inc incorporate that. I like how he said, "Listen, kid, I'm still on that pimp shit. My shoe is like Larry Bird." He from, from Port-au-Prince. He's not from French. Not from French Lake. Yeah, that's a Haitian brother. That's Words. a little different type of shooter. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, you dig? Seriously, for real. Who you want to hear over some Rock Marcy beats in a dream scenario? Like who you want a place to be with? If you Hove, yeah, Nas, Ooh, um, the greats. Yeah, I want to hear them brothers on on my shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, who else I want to work with? I want to work with Schoolboy. Mm. Um. It's, um, it's, it's not a, a lot. Few, you selective. I know you. It's a few cats. It's a few cats. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, you know those dudes that I just mentioned off top. I just produced a project for my man Cooks. He's nasty. He's on a project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's on the joint. He's on two joints. Mm -hmm. um, I like. Um, I like Edo. Little Edo. He's nice. Um, you know, of course, Griselda. Mm -hmm. I like Makami. I like. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, had to sit down um, with Ova, so yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, man, it's 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 some cats out there, man. You know what I'm saying. Another cat from the island, Bob Rock. I fucks with him. Um, Crime Apple. It's 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 a nice crop of dudes, man. You know what I'm saying. Out there coming up, man. I'm really enjoying what's going on. A select few. A select few. <laughs> a select few. It's still a select, select few, few, though. That is still a select few. We getting that Marcia Lago on title, man. I need that, man. It's, we, it's supposed DSP. to be up now, it man. Be It'll be up any day now. Like, yeah, I, I had to. Y'all be putting it up and taking it down. I can't keep up. Sometimes, you know, technical difficulties, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, I got, you know, computer guards. Because I gave you my 30, you know what I'm saying? saying? I just want on my title. Man, you going to have it? You going to have it? It's going to be up any day now, you know what I'm saying? I, I had it redone this morning, you know what I'm saying? It was up this morning. We had to snatch it back. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you know little technical difficulties you have and stuff like that Crazy. you know you know with this bit rates and all That's types of stuff with this stuff it's, at least you know, right because i remember you know when uh west side gun he put a flag i was like yes it's up it's up and then like the next day it was down i was then like it's what down. the f the ups and downs it be in like these DSPs, that. baby it be like that you know what i'm saying ups and downs man, man we always mm -hmm. straightforward with rock man Staying consistent, yes, sir. man. We My appreciate gosh. you, Rock, every day, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate Respect, you. man. Marcia Lago. Stream you, Marcia that. Lago. Rockmarcy.com, man. Y'all go get that, and it's going to be on title. You know, Ooh. and you know, it's just gonna go ahead. Title. It's gonna be on title. It's gonna be on title. It's gonna be on title, man. Of course, man. Y'all hold me down like still. Yes, sir. Word yeah. up. Pleasure. Rap Radar Podcast. Yeah.